Hi, hi, it's me, Chiyo. Welcome. So, we are now on episode 5 of The Smart Money Woman, and we have come far. We really have. And trust me, it is actually getting more interesting as the series goes. So, basically, for the book, I'm just going to get into the book, then get into the series because honestly, not much happened in the book. Basically, uh, Zuri it starts off with Zuri's point of view where she's trying to get some sleep and she gets keeps getting a call from her aunt who usually calls too early in the morning and you know how that and that how annoying that can be when someone calls you like 4 a.m so that's basically the kind of aunt she has so she chooses to ignore the call but the problem here is that when she finally calls her back the next in like where people are actually awake she finds out that there was an actual emergency and the emergency is Zuri's mom's house got burnt. Now, not the whole house got burned down, just, um, I think, the living room and I don't know if it's the bedroom or kitchen, but basically not the whole house. And the mom had, like, smoke inhalation, so she had to go to the hospital for that. And she's over at the aunt's house. Now, the first problem here is the fact that this aunt is the aunt who cried wolf kind of person so that is why Zuri chose not to answer emergency calls and I think of that all the time like do I leave my phone on do I leave it off or is it an emergency but who seriously is calling me no one is calling me for an emergency <laughs> but still I have to leave my phone on for things like that just don't call me in the middle of the night because I would block you so basically this is the scenario that happens and Zuri is now worried about her mom because she wasn't there for her and yeah that sucks and everything but there's really not much Zuri could have done because she's staying somewhere else altogether and talking to her mom probably would just have made her panic more because Zuri is also panicking about the situation. For the bills, her brother thankfully took care of that and Zuri has plans to visit her later so everything is kind of settled until Zuri goes to work and in the state she's in just, I mean she was forced to wake up early, she's now at work on time and she's still thinking about her mom's situation and thinking of how to get an affordable flight to go visit her when she finds out there is an office-wide meeting going on and can I just say I am so glad that I do not have to work in an office the atmosphere the the structure of it is just I wasn't built for it so yeah I can't relate to the situation they are in but they have like an office wide meeting and apparently I mean I'm sure some of you know that when you have an emergency office wide meeting it's usually not good news so we find out that there's been like some hush hush plans to lay off some employees because the company has been losing money and there's been like some issues with the whole um value of naira and new policies and things like that basically nigerian problems well general business problems but we know these are nigerian problems so this has resulted in them having to let go of some of their employees and guess who doesn't get fired zuri zuri doesn't get fired zuri who had been scolded a couple of times not more than a couple of times Zuri, who had been lazy at work, Zuri, who had been put on probation at work, doesn't get fired. I mean, if she's not lucky, I don't know what she is because the people that get fired, we don't know much about them, but we get like a snippet into another character who got fired. And by comparison, this character deserved to have that job more than Zuri. She was more hardworking. She was always early, always left late, always was diligent just doing her job perfectly and she was kind of even a valuable employee because of the department she worked in and to top it all now personal sentiments included she's the breadwinner of her family so she's providing uh she's basically doing everything for her family she's pressing sole provider so by all angles she should have had her job saved while zuri should have been fired and this woman brings it up to Zuri and Zuri is like reeling and like, well, that's true. So she can't actually argue back. But this brings Zuri to a new perspective of how much harder she has to work to um, make sure she doesn't lose her job. And her boss also calls her in and tells her this. And Zuri's all like, yep, I'm going to put in the effort from now on. Great for you, Zuri. 
But on the other hand, this other woman that was fired is apparently the main character in this chapter in the book. And it brings us into the topic of the day, emergency funds. So the question is, when do you start saving for emergencies? And the answer is right when you start making money. And it's very, it's a very, um, I think it's like one of the weirder aspects of money management because you never, honestly, you never know what's going to happen. Superstition, however, aside, you never know what's going to happen in life. You don't know who's going to die. You don't know who's going to be, who's going to lose their job. And we don't know if this woman was saving, but from all accounts, it might be that she wasn't saving for such an emergency. But in real life, it's easy for someone to tell you, oh, put aside money to save for emergency funds. But it's hard to pull off because first you have to save for, you have to have money for investments. You have to have money for all the bills you have to pay. You have to have normal savings. You have to have just so much you're putting money into medical bills, housing, etc. And then you still have to somehow from this little salary that most people make, carve out something to put into your emergency funds. Now I could say if that's small, even if it's 100 naira, 1000 naira you can put in, and that is possible. But it's still hard because some people are literally living, what's this phrase, hand to mouth. So where are you getting this money for emergency funds from? So yeah, that's why it's a tricky topic and it's something I wish it was easy for everybody to do, but there are so many like bigger priorities when it comes to um, how to manage your money. But if you can, if you know you can, if you're not leaving hand to mouth, if you can actually afford to have a good time, it is wise to take from that good time money and put into an emergency fund money. Because at that point, when you're spending all of this money you have on having fun and everything, you're kind of living above your means. So you should be putting that money into something more useful, basically. But yeah, that is what I'm going into the book. And I don't know, I usually don't go into the lessons of the day because I'm not here to teach you, but it's just like one of the topics I've thought about for a while now. And sometimes like, I keep money aside, but it's not consistent and I don't feel like it's enough, like the pace is not enough. If something were to happen tomorrow, I can't really say I'm covered kind of stuff. So that's why I want to talk about it. But let's go into the episode, which is the fun episode. Yay! Now, the first thing, when I start watching it, because we're feeling, we're starting with the story in the book, the first thing I noticed is these side characters don't know how to act. Well, except for Chinasa, because if you can pull up being that annoying, you must be a very good actor. <laughs> and then the woman that got fired will get to her scene in a bit. So yeah, we go through the whole story talking to her aunt and it's a very drawn out conversation about what's happening with the mom and I'm wondering why we're here for so long as I always do. Yes, I still have beef with Zuri scenes. But when that conversation is over, we see more story happen in the series. And there's a series of texts about Tammy, so we know that Tammy is in trouble. And Tammy is the fashion designer, so this is where her trouble is because She's getting a lot of um, social media insults and all that. People calling her a bad tailor, bad fashion designer. She's cheating people. Basically, the stories you hear about how bad tailors are in Nigeria, that's the kind of backlash she's getting online. And Zuri and the rest of the French rush over to comfort her and find out what's going on. Before that, they get into the comfort, they give us like a flashback of what happened right before that happened. So we see the problem Tammy faced. <sighs> and the first thing is like the employees just decided to have like their own secret meeting and came from nowhere and told her that they were all quitting. And here is my thing with that. It is possible to be a good boss and people quit on you. The way she was shouting at them, I'm not quite sure how she was as a boss. So there's no sense, I don't feel the sense of they are, I know it's like work is work, but they're still, I think in like this kind of setting, there's still supposed to be like some 
sort of family feel so that the employees trust you and you trust them to stay that's one thing but again the scenario was they had a lot of orders to fulfill and these people were wasting time so she was reasonably angry so i can't say if she's a good boss or a bad boss at this point but something i like to point out especially like i've had the conversations before when i was still figuring out if i could do office job i always knew i wasn't going to do but when i was still figuring out like the um how to handle if you're an employee or if you're hiring someone there was this conversation i had about contracts when to sign contracts and some you don't take when you're not like in a proper office business setting people don't take contracts seriously even like when they're even employing people that are not big big employees or whatever they like whatever the term is they don't take signing contracts in those scenarios seriously but the thing is you should because we get from this scene that not only are they quitting on her without any notice so they there's no time to prepare to get new people to replace them or to teach people that can take over the job there's no care done she also just paid them so they waited until they got their pay and a few days later they disappeared that is what's happening here and if you take signing contracts seriously, make the employees know it seriously, while well, people can still disappear on you and you can't find them and you cannot get the process settled, it reduces the chances of this happening. It reduces the chances of people just walking out on you without any sort of plan. So yes, I blame Tammy for this, whether she was a good employee or not, for the business structure system, I blame her for the fact that they were able to do this. I know not everybody's aware of it, but as big as the her business was doing i think at that point she should have been aware of it and like throughout this i'm just having questioning time's decisions because when these people quit she has to fulfill um about 86 orders and uh, you know they're all expensive orders so this is a lot of money a lot of big clients a lot of people looking at her to see if she can pull it off kind of stuff and she decides to reach out to one of those um companies that have tailors on hand for hire and she gets about five tailors to come and finish this work these other people didn't finish and she's never worked with these people before she's never seen these tailors before she just gives them the work and tells them to finish it and they do and she sends all the clothes out and then she starts getting blasted why did she get blasted one she did not actually monitor their work two even if she didn't monitor their work she didn't look at the finished work and let's assume she looked at the finished work. Let's assume she did. She did not notice the bad work they did. Because she was there when the bags are being taken away. So I wonder if she never opened it to look at it. Or she did and she just ignored the mistakes that were made on those clothes. And that is a separate kind of beef I have with her and fashion designers like her. Because a lot of people claim that they are fashion designers. And you might have a good eye for nice things, or maybe you're just buying it because it's expensive, so you assume it's good. But even if you're not doing the work yourself, you should have the knowledge about how these works should be done or what the finished product should look like. And that would prevent people from cheating you, from making anything and passing off as actual clothes. So she's not put this care into the work, one way or the other, and now she's getting the backlash for it so i can't i blame her for the problems but because i relate to the level of i'm also a fashion designer and i know how hard it can be even though I'm, i don't have like a big outlet yet or anything i know how hard it can be so when i was watching her struggle with her emotions for this whole thing i felt really bad because i just can't i can just imagine you take your time, put in lots of effort, money, everything into something and watch it get destroyed. So it was kind of painful for me to watch. But yeah. So we're back to the present and her friends are comforting her and they come up with the idea of how to save her neck. Like you can't take away what has happened. So I give her an apology. Show proof that besides this problem, she's actually a good fashion designer and all that. So they do that for her and her own issues kind of sorted 
But as I'm watching this um, scenario of her going through her emotions and her friends trying to comfort her, I'm just there looking at the clothes that they're wearing. Oh my goodness. I mean, I've noticed it since the series started, but oh my goodness, are those clothes fine? Like, look at what they're wearing, those clothes, the colors. Oh my gosh, those things are beautiful. And it just keeps reminding me that I'm supposed to make clothes for myself. I'm supposed to be designing. Like, I already have designs. I'm just having two ladies to get them done. I'm supposed to have my clothes ready. And I'm just seeing the designs of what they're wearing. I'm like, those things are beautiful. All the clothes I've seen that were beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Leaving the clothes aside, Zuri goes back to work. And the whole mess of getting um the company meeting about to happen has been talked about so everyone is panicking and everyone is trying to sort themselves out and get prepped ready for the meeting and that guy that guy from episode two that guy that i said i hope or not a waste of time has proven that he's even more annoying than he was the first time around and even more unnecessary and so many things about him that annoy me because one, he calls Zuri his best friend. And I'm wondering why it is an actual establishment of best friend. I don't know if it's because of he was just randomly dropped into the story that is annoying me or because of his attitude. I know his attitude is annoying, but I don't know which one of the two annoys me more. Because he's calling her um he's calling her his best friend, and there's nothing friendly about their relationship, their rapport. He just seems like this irritating person that disturbs her so much and he's trying to convince her to join a pyramid scheme and he's talking very rudely <sighs> and i still have not seen his relevance to this story is he supposed to be relevant is he what is he really supposed to be there doing i really hope he does something in this thing because at this point i just i really want him out of there he's so annoying like how can you be so rude and so unnecessary at the same time it's even worse than Chinata because Chinata has like this villain flavor of her, but he just has this annoying person who was not supposed to be here flavor about him. So yeah, I don't know why he's still here, but I guess as long as we go to our office, we'll see him or something. After his unnecessary scene, we are in the meeting room and then they do the layouts. And of course, again, Zuri gets saved. She doesn't get fired but this but the other person mentioned in the book gets fired and honestly her accent is beautiful she's a i was convinced i don't know if i've seen her like in the other episode maybe they like show like a few a second or two when um zuri walked into office i actually don't see what you guys seen i've seen her in the series and i guess this is like her last showing in this whole series but my gosh in this short time she was here she impressed me. She's such a good actress. I have not followed your journey, but I felt the feeling of I just got fired because she pulled that scene off well, better than some of the more relevant cast, if I should, if I say. And she's a beautiful, she's a beautiful actress. She's, she, she can really act. So she gives a whole speech about why how she lost her job and Zuri didn't and all that and Zuri is there kind of like well I don't know I may still get fired later kind of stuff but it's not convincing it's not really a thing and the, and the scene ends because she tells Zuri to leave her alone and Zuri with the sad feeling goes over the scene changes to like a dinner because of course they always have to have their meals together and I think that's a really fun friend thing to do but if you're in the house like I am all the time the chances of going out every day to hang out with your friends and slim because you're really settled in, you settled in bed or your couch or something. I'm a house cat, that's what I say. Like I the house is my fortress, it's my castle, it's my palace. I love being indoors all the time. So for me to stand up, dress up, go out every day. I might love you as my friend, but come on, I cannot do that. But yes, they have their dinner, and this time around, it's not just any dinner. It's Adesua's dinner, because Adesua got a promotion, yay for her. But at the same time, I cannot help but feel worried for her, because there's already this dynamic between her and her husband, where she is 
the breadwinner of our family but he's the bully kind of thing so with this promotion now with him not doing well and her getting promotion i think that just spells disaster and of course we see her trying to cover that up saying oh no don't worry he's supportive he's very happy for me but we all know that's not true and i cannot like why i don't I, I don't understand. I know it's like this kind of society pressure and needing somebody in your life kind of thing. But come on, she's such a boss lady. She's getting promotions, she's taking charge in the office. She's the way you hear her talk about her work, you know that this is the kind of woman that knows what she's doing in office. So why is it different at home? Like I'm not asking like for an explanation it's just like i know this is very common I j and and i just i just wish it wasn't i just wish it wasn't common that's the thing that's why i'm just getting out of this so like how can you be this person and this person at the same time it's just a sad position to be in but we that's where they where she is and now all the friends are there and they're having a discussion about the things that have transpired for them for tammy's issue with the business for zuri's issue with almost the chance of her getting fired for um lara's issue with her brother trying to drop out of school and all that and as they're talking it's kind of like talking about money money management too and that's where like with all the things that had come up there's this thing of emergency funds again and that's where we get the final point out to the lesson of the day emergency funds how to get them how to keep them and when we should start them kind of thing and that's what happens in this episode watching their stories was actually quite interesting it's like a short series so i don't expect it to get so detailed but it's really good i had fun with this one and i hope you had fun with this video so that is it for my video today if you like this video don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a thing and also share this video with as many people as you can because honestly i don't think anyone knows i exist and that i'm here making this video so let them know about it okay thank you see you next time bye